and I, it goes I, out everywhere. I acknowledge and what's understand the advantage? and appreciate what's, so what's the your, concept what's the behind advantage here? Uh, pool what's, reporting. What is your advantage here? Yeah. What is the benefit? Uh, again, I think, you know, this is just an attempt to reach beyond uh, uh, the usual suspects, and I'm not trying to say that in a demeaning way at all, but suspects it's just to say. not demeaning? I'm using a term of art, a cultural term of art, or everyone knows what that means. Um, uh, what I'm saying is this is a chance or an opportunity uh, at the beginning of a new administration uh, to look at uh, outside the box, if I could say that, uh, um, approaches uh, to how uh, we cover uh, or how uh, we handle coverage of the secretary. It isn't to say this is going to be the status quo or the new uh, order going forward. Um, this is a, uh, just a particular to this trip. I, I don't know at this point, um, but it's – uh, an effort, as I said, to reach beyond uh, the normal procedures. And rightly, uh, or that's exactly what you pointed out, Arshad. Um, I just, again, want to stress the point that there's going to be broad access to the secretary on this trip. And, and we're doing best, uh, we're doing our best uh, to accommodate uh, to our uh, embassies in Beijing and Tokyo and Seoul uh, to accommodate reporters, as we always do. The last, the last, sorry, the last, last one for me. Last one, one, one for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, the last one for me. What is – I get you say that you are trying to think outside the box. What I don't get is what advantage it confers to the department to look outside the box in this way. What does it get, what does it get you new to have a reporter on there new, that, that is yeah. not filing to the rest of the press corps yeah. and that does not appear to have – Long-standing knowledge of, of these issues. What is what is, what advantage is there? Uh, new audiences, uh, uh, new perspectives. Audience, this is a conservative outlet. Again, a friendly <laughs> audience. Uh, again, I'm not going to speak to you know. I mean, it's it's. I mean, look, we can dissect uh, you know the cross section of U.S. media, uh, and we can spend the rest of the briefing doing that. Um, this was a choice that was made uh, to do something differently. Uh, that's been done uh, for many, many years, as we all know. Uh, I, I can't say that it's going to be the, the policy going forward. I just can't speak to that. Um, but at the same time that we're doing this, we're experimenting, if you will, uh, taking it in a different direction. We're also meeting our obligations to provide access to reporters who want to cover the trip. Do the, do, do the department feel like – I mean, because something has been done for many, many years, there's obviously a reason that it evolved to be that. So this indicates that the department feels that there was something wrong with that setup, which got the message to Not the at broadest. all. I, I don't think so. I think it's – again, just because you try something new and different, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're – you're saying what you've been doing is wrong. Uh, there's Look, we all know that there's a very um, uh, time-honored uh, uh, system uh, for how we cover uh, Secretary uh, of State trips. I understand that. All of you understand that in this room. Uh, this is a little bit different way of doing it. Again, I'm not saying this is going to be the norm going forward. Um, we're also, at the same time we're doing this, allowing this, we're also providing support for can we move beyond this? Yeah. Well, hold on a second. Are you involved in this decision? No. Can, can we, we, wait, 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 wait. I just want to ask a quick question about the um, Human Rights Council. So it's been reported yeah. that Secretary of State sent a letter to nine nonprofit organizations saying that um, there needed to be reform or the U.S. might withdraw. And his words quoted in the article are that the Human Rights Council requires considerable reform in order for us to continue to participate. So what's the process here? Is there like a kind of probation period and then uh, after which the U.S. might withdraw from the council? And I have a follow-up after that. Sure. Um, so I don't want to speak to the contents of uh, what was a letter between Secretary Tillerson and uh, these uh, um, uh, uh, NGOs. Um, but I think speaking to the broader question, um, a couple of points to make. One is that our commitment to human rights and fundamental freedoms is stronger than ever. Our delegation is at now at the 34th session of the Human Rights Council. It's actively engaged. Um, but uh, the United States also continues to believe that only UN member states with strong records of promoting and protecting human rights should be elected to the Human Rights Council. Uh, and uh, I think our future engagements with the Council uh, will consider uh, the Council's actions with an eye towards reform 
uh, to more fully uh, achieve the Council's mission to protect and promote human rights. So I think this is a, an eye towards greater accountability and greater transparency with respect to human rights. I'm not predicting we're going to walk away from the Council. Uh, what I will say is that we're going to hold the Council and its members uh, more accountable uh, and, and, and uh, urge greater accountability and transparency. What do you mean by future engagements? Future engagements will consider the council. With the council, it, yeah, working with the council and the members of the council. So you might decide not to work with it, but not walk away. Like Again, I don't want to predict what our, <laughs> that we're going to walk away from it. I think what we're at this stage now, uh, we want to try to urge greater accountability and greater transparency on Speaking the part of the of council. Accountability yeah. and transparency. Is there a reason why we moved away from the subject that we were on so quickly? I mean, I, w I wasn't even finished. I feel like we've exhausted it, frankly. Um, I do, mean, I'm, do others feel that way? Isn't, I, I mean, uh, I mean, if Michelle has another you, question, you I think she should be able to ask You very abruptly moved away from the subject. There, there were a few more follow-up questions. I mean, Go ahead. if you don't mind, sure. um, for for the White House or whoever made this decision to choose an organization that is not part of the pool and is a cons an obviously conservative uh, website or whatever you want to call it, doesn't that narrow the message and not broaden it? And what message does this send to the American public and the rest of the world? I, th I think it sends a message that uh, we're willing to look at new paradigms with our, our approach to the media. Um, again, while at the same time ensuring that uh, traditional uh, media has full access, and non-traditional media for that matter. What are you Asked, is this person on the plane going to have more access and or going to have some kind of additional opportunities and your answer was you didn't know and that's another question that I have if you are the press spokesperson but no, why, no, Michelle, why do you Michelle, not but know why should I I mean uh, the fact of the matter is um, I'm not managing uh, this trip I've been very clear about that in the sense of press access um, there's somebody with the secretary Who's do, dealing with yeah, that? But you're the press so with respect to, I understand so that. So shouldn't you know that. who's going on a trip two hours before the plane takes off? And shouldn't you know what kind of access or not that person's going to have it related so, to the so pool? So first of all, Michelle, I'm not necessarily going to uh, lay out what access this individual might have or might not have. Uh, frankly, that's between the State Department and this individual. Uh, secondly, um, you know, uh, I wasn't in a position to confirm this individual's uh, uh, participation or involvement with the trip until shortly before the trip. And I think I spelled it out, or if I didn't, I apologize, but, uh, you know, I spelled it out as uh, after the briefing ended yesterday, I tried to confirm that this individual was on board, um, but the, they were already wheels up, and frankly, they were in the air until almost midnight, uh, so I didn't have comms with the plane, uh, communications with the plane. Well, once we did, uh, we confirmed, and uh, I think we put out something this morning. I'd love to. I'd love to. I feel like, and guys, and guys, I'm not trying to move. Sorry, I'm not trying to move quickly away. I think I've answered now somewhere in the vicinity of 10 or 15 questions about this. Let me finish. But guys, we can talk about this offline. This is an exercise in discussing the issues and discussing policies respectfully. Can't we move on? These, these briefings Sorry, are really few and far in between. It is, and I've no, been transparent. Not, this is not But do you really want to spend the next hour? Because, yeah, you know, I, I don't have all day to answer your questions about policy issues. And yet, I mean, for example, do we, we want to talk about the fact that it's the sixth anniversary of the uh, conflict in Syria? Yeah, please. Uh, do we want to answer questions about the Middle East? Yemen? I'd love to answer questions about Yemen. Go ahead, Saeed. I was chatting for. Yeah. First of all, today marks the sixth anniversary of the beginning of the Syria war. Today, uh, do you have any comment where you are with the Syria war? What is your involvement? What is the effort uh, forward? What is going on? Sure. So. As you note, six years ago this week, uh, tens of thousands of Syrians did take to the streets uh, to claim the right to express themselves freely, uh, call for reforms, and demand justice. And as we all know, uh, President Assad reacted to these peaceful protests with guns, with bullets, and with brutality. Um, and I think it's important to note on this day uh, and to recognize uh, the sacrifice of the brave men and women uh, from across Syria's diverse society uh, who risk so much to build a better future uh, for themselves and their children. Uh, we also remember the countless civilians, including uh, many, many children uh, who have lost their lives from torture, from starvation, and from attacks by the regime 
and its backers. Uh, the United States does remain committed to finding a peaceful diplomatic resolution uh, to the Syrian conflict. All of us know how hard that is. Uh, we can only look at the talks in Astana and to see how they're struggling uh, to reach a durable ceasefire. But that has to be the next step. And we support those talks. We support them even though uh, we're only there in observer status. Please. We are, you know, we're a little bit confused as to what the United States is doing, what, which group that is supporting and so on. I mean, you know, of course, uh, you can take the regime and so on. But there's been a great, great many terror acts in Damascus and around Damascus. Yeah. You have not condemned that. I mean, there was one today. There well, was one, the two one today? Days, two, two, two days ago and so on. So we have not seen a, a statement. So sure. what is your position on, on these Qaeda-affiliated uh, groups that claim to have your support, sure. claims to have weapons that were supplied by the United States? Well, um, a couple of points to make. One is, uh, you, you know where we stand with respect to uh, al-Nusra. Uh, who rebranded themselves but remain an affiliate of al-Qaeda. Uh, I'm aware of the attack, uh, again, uh, or today's attack in Damascus. I think we're still trying to collect all the details of that uh, to figure out uh, what exactly happened. Uh, Saeed, you know as well as I do, we don't have the best eyes and ears on the ground in Damascus. So whenever we uh, are looking at any event like this, tragic as it appears, uh, we want to obviously collect all the details and before we make an educated guess as to who is behind that. But we condemn any act of violence, any act of terrorism. And Please. you still believe that uh, Assad should not have a role to play in the future of Syria? We, we still believe Assad? The, the president of Syria, uh, Bashar al-Assad. Uh, how would we view him? We view him as a brutal well, – no. Uh, no, we view him as, a, a, yeah. as a, uh, a brutal man who has led his country into this morass. Uh, that said, uh, you know, it's up for the Syrian people. Uh, that means opposition, moderate opposition, working with, obviously. Uh, the uh, uh, some representation on the part of the regime uh, to try to forge uh, a, a political transition. We believe that will be a tr transition away from Assad because we don't believe he can ever be an acceptable leader to all of the Syrian people. Michelle, let's stay on Syria. On Astana talks. Stay on Syria, then I'll go to Iraq. Uh, Russia has proposed yesterday a project to set up a constitutional commission to deal with uh, drafting the constitution. How do you view this step, and uh, does it contradict with the Geneva process? You know, Michelle, I've seen that. I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to look at that uh, very closely. I'm aware. I mean, obviously, drafting a new constitution was part of the overall process leading towards a political transition, so I'm not quite sure uh, where this new proposal would fit into that uh, process, as you say, or whether it's uh, in accord with or in contradiction to the Geneva process. So let me look into that and get back to you. And the U.S. ambassador in Kazakhstan has met with the Russian uh, delegation there. Yep. Uh, do you have any readout for this meeting? I don't. He's any there. Coordination um, sure. Between it's our ambassador countries? to Kazakhstan. He's there, obviously, in an observer role. Uh, I haven't gotten the readout of his, uh, his participation yet. Uh, uh, Iraq. Let's see with Syria. Sure. Assyria and then Syria. Please, go ahead. The, the Hill reported last week that Senator McCain is very concerned that the U.S. alignment with the YPG in Syria is going to lead to a, quote, train wreck because the U.S. fails to <clears throat> comprehend the extent of Turkish opposition to the YPG. What would be your response to Senator McCain's concerns? Uh, well, um, we certainly respect uh, Sec uh, Senator McCain's uh, opinion. Uh, obviously, he's a very experienced uh, a senator, and he has broad knowledge of uh, global affairs, including Syria. Um, I think we've been clear in acknowledging uh, that uh, it's a very complex uh, battle space in northern Syria. We have chosen to work with the YPG as a part of the Syrian Democratic Forces, which include Syrian Kurds. Syrian Turks, uh, Syrian Turkmen, rather, and Syrian Arabs, so a diverse uh, group uh, uh, of ethnicities uh, in order to go after 